Top of the morning to you, gauchos, and welcome to the last UCSB TV episode of the winter 2020 quarter. To all our dedicated viewers out there, thank you so much for being this production's lucky charms. You've truly shamrocked our world by turning in every week. In this episode, news anchor Hannah is clo clovering district supervisor elections and the graduate student cola strikes. And in sports news, Maddie gives you your sports updates. Keep being a couch potato and don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. What's up, Gauchos? If you see me on St. Patrick's Day in all black instead of green, don't pinch me. I'm mourning the loss of our fellow Irishmen in the Great Potato Famine of 1845. Never forget. Let's take a look at this week's news. I know by the time this is posted, we have already voted, but since it's going to come down to a top two candidates for our third district supervisor, I would encourage you to go check out the Bottom Line's interviews with Joan Hartman, Bruce Porter, and Karen Jones. Our voices matter. These local elections end with close calls, so do your research and check out what candidates are all about. You can find their interviews on the Bottom Line's website or on their Twitter at TBLUCSB. According to the Daily Nexus, on February 28th, the COLA strike had drawn over 2,000 supporters. Since the dismissal of over 50 graduate students at UC Santa Cruz on the 28th, the fire under this movement has been further ignited. COLA stands for Cost of Living Adjustments. We're the second UC to go on strike for it, and UC Davis just released that they'll also be withholding grades in protest. Now we're striking in solidarity. It's bigger than UCSB. The movement is becoming UC-wide. With support from professors, undergrads, and staff, this is a developing situation as we wait to see how our administration will compromise. If you want to see more updates on this story or read more, you can check out the Daily Nexus website. You can also check out the Instagram page at UCSB4COLA, that's the number four, to check out live updates. Support your TAs and stay in the loop. That's all I've got for this week's news. At this point in my segment, I always give myself a mental high five because usually it takes a few tries with this teleprompter to get it right. I'm high-fiving myself right now, in here. Let's go to Maddie with sports. Top of the morning, Gauchos. Happy St. Patrick's Day and welcome back to sports. Let's see how our luck played out in last week's games. Baseball certainly had a lucky week. They won all four of their games. They beat LMU 7-2, and then they took on the University of Illinois Chicago three times, beating them more each time. First, it was 3-2, then it was 10-0, and then they ended a week with a 15-1 win. Didn't have to flex on us like that. Softball also had a ton of games this week. They started out losing 6-4 against Bradley and losing 11-7 against Portland State, but then their luck turned around. They had a rematch against Bradley, and then the Gauchos won 6-4. They beat St. Peter's twice, once with a 4-1 win and next with a 7-1 win. Then to top it all off, they creamed Portland State in a 10-1 win. Shout out softball. Men's volleyball had two games this week and they won two games. They defeated both USC and Pepperdine in 3-0 wins. Loving the consistency. Women's basketball came out with an even record this week. Even though they lost to Cal Poly 56-52 early on, they came back and took down Long Beach State 55-47. Keep it up, Gauchos. Men's basketball's week looked pretty much identical. They started out with a 69-58 loss against UC Irvine, but then followed the women's lead and killed it in their second game with a 65-60 win against UC Riverside. That's what we like to see. Last, but certainly not least, our tennis teams had quite the week. Women's tennis started out with a 4-2 loss against Washington State, but following the trend of our other teams, recovered with a 4-3 win against San Diego. Men's tennis also beat San Diego State 4-3. All of our gauchos certainly brought their A-game this week. And I have a feeling we have another luck-filled week. Come on out to this week's games wearing your favorite blue and gold outfit. On Tuesday, watch the gauchos take down the Bruins multiple times. Baseball will play UCLA at 5.30 p.m. and men's volleyball will play UCLA at 7 p.m. On Thursday, catch men's basketball versus Cal State Fullerton at 7 p.m. And on Friday, you'll have a decision to make. Either watch men's tennis versus Utah State or men's volleyball versus UC San Diego, but they're both at 1.30. Same goes for Saturday. Women's water polo plays CSU Northridge at 12 p.m. and at the same time, women's tennis takes on LMU. But on Saturday, there is no choice. Go to the Thunderdome and see men's basketball crush Cal Poly at 7 p.m. Finish out the week on Sunday with men's tennis versus Drake at 1.30 p.m. And don't forget about our teams on the road. Golf, women's basketball, women's water polo, softball, women's tennis, 
baseball, and track and field all have important games away from campus this week. Be sure to send them all your best luck. Win or lose, we're all proud to be Gauchos. That's it for sports this week. Catch you on the flip in spring quarter. I'm sure we'll all be happier by then. Go Gauchos! Thank you everyone for that wonderful update. As always, don't forget that you can find all UCSB TV episodes on the AS YouTube channel, on our UCSB TV Facebook page, and on Gaucho Space. From all of us here at UCSB TV, we thank you for sticking with us this quarter, and we hope to see you again next quarter. Have a fantastic spring break, Gauchos. Oh, Jesus. Hate a famine of 19. I messed up. It was in the 1800s. I got excited. That's it.